everybody. Welcome back to Zoo School Live. My name is Laura and today we're going to be meeting with some more of our awesome animals here at Elmwood Park Zoo. Remember that if you are watching today and you guys have questions, anything that we didn't cover, or maybe you want us to go back and cover something a little bit more in depth, feel free to put them in the comments and we will read through some of them towards the end of our program today to make sure we can engage you guys and, and get all the information out there that you're really interested in. So today, we're going to focus on another aquatic animal. So on Tuesday, for our opening of Fall Zoo School Live, you guys met Penny the alligator, who was super cool, and you got to talk with Keeper Tim about some of her special adaptations, so how she survives in the water, and specifically how she's a good hunter in the water. So today we're going to meet another type of animal that would spend a lot of time um, in aquatic habitats, in ponds and puddles and things like that, but also has some really cool ways of surviving in some extreme heat and cold, which is pretty interesting to have all of those different adaptations. They're a little smaller than Penny. We're actually going to meet two of them today. You guys have met one of these animals earlier in zoo school in the spring. We're actually going to be meeting with Alpha and Echo, our African bullfrogs. So I'm going to pull these guys out. We're going to have our friend Echo hanging out in this little kind of sandy, dry habitat because in the wild, the African bullfrog is found, believe it or not, in Africa. And they are found in some of the savanna and desert areas even at times. So even though we think of frogs as primarily living near water, sometimes frogs can live in different habitats. So Echo's going to hang out here in our dry, deserty, sand, savanna habitat to show off his special adaptations for surviving in uh, those types of conditions. And then we also have Alpha coming back. Alpha met with you guys this spring at zoo school, and he's going to be demonstrating for us some really nice aquatic adaptations. So Alpha's going to go in our little pond over here. Oh, I know. There you go, Alpha. He's going to take a nice little dip for us. So we'll start off on the aquatic adaptations. So as you can see, Alpha, like other frogs, is going to have four legs with some pretty big feet on those back feet. Now on his back feet, he's going to have webbing in between his toes. So you can kind of see a little bit of that skin in there. Um, whereas we have really big gaps in between our fingers and our toes, frogs and other aquatic animals often have little skin that connects them. And this provides them a nice paddle for swimming around. So if Alpha would be hanging out in the pond and he needs to get away, he needs to escape quickly, he can thrust those big back feet out and they kind of catch a lot of water and push it out of the way. So think of if you are a diver, you might wear big flippers on your feet. Um, that's going to help to push as much water as possible, which helps them to swim. So many frogs are going to have those webbed feet. His skin is also going to be very specially designed to assist with keeping him nice and wet. Now, when he's in the water, he can actually absorb water through his skin, which is pretty crazy. That'd be like if you sat in your bathtub and sat there for about an hour and then you'd be like, oh, I'm not thirsty anymore. I sucked up a nice bunch of water. Frogs can actually absorb water through their skin and they can also have oxygen go through their skin. So they have what we call permeable skin, which is pretty cool. And on his skin, he also has a slime coat. It's kind of hard to tell just looking, but there's a lot of slime uh, covering all of his body. And this is helpful if he were to leave the water. So not only does it help protect his skin, it makes him really slippery so that if a predator came along, it'd be hard to grab him. That water that he absorbs into his body is also going to stay in his body a lot easier by that slime coat. So it prevents him from drying out, which is super important. Our frogs, are they belong to a group of animals called amphibians. And the word amphibian almost literally means two lives or double lives. And that's because amphibians often start their life in water. So a frog like Alpha or Echo would actually be born out of a little egg. And we have a cool example over here. They would hatch out of a tiny little egg. 
that doesn't have a hard shell. So in order to be an amphibian, you're gonna come out of a tiny, tiny little egg that doesn't have a shell. It kind of almost looks like an eyeball. It's very weird. And many amphibians, so frogs and toads and certain types of newts and salamanders, are going to come out of that egg as an aquatic larva or an aquatic creature, very fish-like. They're gonna have a long tail to help them paddle around and they're going to have gills to help them breathe underwater. So after a few, um, sometimes a few months, a few weeks, depending on the species, they're going to start to change over. They go through a process called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. So they're gonna switch from being an aquatic creature with a tail and gills, they're going to start to grow legs. They'll grow back legs first and then front legs. And eventually inside of their body, they'll actually switch over from lungs to gills and that tail will shrink back into their body. So it doesn't just fall off, it doesn't just disappear, it actually gets absorbed back into their body and provides them with energy so that they can get that last big burst and really grow big enough to come out of the water. So that's the life cycle of our species of frogs here in North America and throughout the world. So for Alpha and Echo, they would have hatched out of a tiny egg and a small little tadpole, had to survive a lot of other animals that would want to eat them, lots of birds and um, different mammals, and even other frogs might want to eat them as, an, as a tadpole. And then once they grew up, they went through metamorphosis, grew those legs, lost that tail, they would come out onto land. Now some types of amphibians leave the water and they never look back, but others like our bullfrogs are going to return to spend some time either hunting for food or laying their own eggs. So they're gonna have to come back to the water to lay their own eggs. Now, coming back to our friend Alpha who's putting around in this pond, not only does he have awesome webbed feet and a nice slimy skin that's gonna let him to absorb water and air, he also has some special senses to help him get around in the water. If we take a look at his eyes, you'll notice that they sit up on top of his head. This is a little bit different than many other animals. And if we look through the side, you might even be able to tell why he wants those eyes on the top. So when he's sitting in the water, that water level can rise up really close over his whole body, just leaving his eyes exposed. And if you look at the color of him, he kind of has a brown and green color. So if he's in the water and the water's all the way around his body, except for his eyes just sitting up on top of the water, he can blend in really well. And this serves two purposes. It one, helps him to escape a predator, but two, it also helps him hunt for his food. Because African bullfrogs are carnivores. They are hunters. They are going to eat other animals. And they have huge mouths. So what he'll do is he'll sit right at the edge of the pond. He's got his little eyes that he's looking up with. Everything else is hidden. He might sit really still and wait for that little creature to come down to get a drink. Maybe there's a little bird that's gonna come get a little drink down by the water. And right when that little bird leans in to get a drink, bah, he's gonna jump, grab him in that big mouth and take him into the water with him. So he has those big eyes sitting right up on top of his head to help him see things that he wants to eat and to help prevent him from becoming eaten. He can basically see almost the whole way around his body. The other really cool sense that he has, um, it's a little different than us, so he does have ears, believe it or not, but his ears are kind of hidden. They're kind of closed over. They're not open and they don't stick out like we have on our head. They're kind of covered up to prevent water and other things from getting inside there. So on the side of his head, I'll kind of slide him back so we can see a little bit better maybe. Um, he's actually got some pretty cool areas where his ears would be kind of right in there. So it's got a little bit of skin over top of it and that protects it again from weird stuff like water and dirt and muck from getting inside. So frogs in general are all going to have these special adaptations. Um, the eyes, the ears, the skin, those webbed feet, those are all great for surviving in the water, but sometimes those adaptations can help in a different way as well. So if we come over here to Echo, Echo is also an African bullfrog, but he is demonstrating very nicely how they can go from living both in the water to on land. Now in Africa, it can get extremely warm on the savanna where these frogs are found, and there are very different types of seasons throughout the year. So here in Pennsylvania, we have spring, summer, fall, winter. In Africa and other places that are 
um, tropical or, or you know, have desert areas, they usually go through a rainy or a dry period. So for a frog, the rainy season is super awesome. There's lots of puddles, there's lots of places to hide, lots of water to play around in and to find food and to lay your eggs. But that dry season can be really hard to survive. So African bullfrogs will actually climb out of the water, and many times their, their little ponds, their water areas, will unfortunately dry up, and they'll find a place that's got some pretty thick, sandy soil. And they will start to use those back legs to dig. So if we take a look, I'm gonna see if I can turn our friend Echo around here and show you those feet again. But instead of underwater, we're gonna look at them on land. So these big paddle feet, <laughs> it's a little sensitive about its feet, there we go. They actually don't just help to swim, they help him to dig. So what a, bro a bullfrog will do is they'll stick their back legs in the sand and they'll start to kind of twist their body. They do a little butt wiggle back and forth and that will actually dig the sand and the dirt up and they can create a hole using those big paddle-like back feet. In fact, bullfrogs have kind of a, a rough, um, almost like a nail type thing on the edge of their feet and that helps to get some grip. So they have feet that are designed to help them swim, but also to help them dig. So Echo would climb out of that puddle. You know, that puddle would probably dry up in the, the desert, the dry season. And he would use those back legs to dig a nice hole. And he would kind of get himself completely underground if need be. And he's going to try to find a place that might stay a little bit wet, even in the dry season and even in the heat. Um, so he's going to dig down pretty far. And remember I mentioned that they can actually absorb water through their skin? Well, when they're underground, they can breathe through their skin a little bit. So they don't actually have to come up to the surface for several months. They can dig down into that mud, find a nice cool spot, find a nice sort of wet spot, not just enough moisture to keep them alive, and they will hunker down and stay there as long as they need to until the rain returns in that wet season. So they not only have great ways of surviving in the water, but they've also learned to adapt to a very dry and arid habitat as well, which is pretty cool. And you can see the camouflage works well in both habitats. Echo here blends in nicely with the sandy soil, the rocks, and Alpha would blend in nicely with a nice mucky pond with some green algae and things like that. So these guys both do live here at the zoo. Um, they are the same species, as I said, they are potentially related, we're not 100% sure. They did come to us about the same time. They came from the Fort Wayne Zoo about four years ago. Now, African bullfrogs can get extremely large. You guys can potentially see, compared to my hand, how big these frogs are. So when you're up close, it's kind of hard to tell, but with my hand there comparing, they're huge. Now here in North America, we do have bullfrogs. Um, we have the American bullfrog, aptly named. And they can get about this big, but not much larger. Alpha and Echo could grow to be even larger than they are right now. They could be about the size of a dinner plate. Um, we're not exactly sure whether they're male or female. There is a little bit of a slight difference between the two size-wise. So we'll find out as soon as they continue to grow. Um, but they are about four years old. So they still have some growing to do, which is pretty impressive. As you can imagine, a big animal like this is going to eat a lot of different things. They're gonna have a big mouth to put that food into. So you can kind of see a little better on Echo here how wide that mouth is. I actually have some food here today. We're gonna to see if they would like to eat um, in front of you guys. While um, I'm offering the food, if one of them takes it, I want you guys to watch what their eyeballs do because frogs have these really huge eyes, remember, on top of their head to help them see all around, to help them blend in and hide. They also help to swallow. So they will actually blink their eyeballs and those eyeballs will push the food back into their throat, which is pretty weird, but awesome. So we're gonna see if our friend Alpha here first is in the mood for some food. Give a little wiggle here. He was. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. So you probably saw that big tongue flurp out. So frogs um, in cartoons and movies are often portrayed as having this huge, long, sticky tongue. Some frogs do have very, very long tongues. Bullfrogs do not. 
they do have very long, a very wide tongue though, and it is a little bit sticky and it helps to pull that food into their, <laughs> into their mouth. Um, so you could see how wide it is and frogs kind of have a very special way of telling whether they want to run away from something or if they want to eat something. If something is kind of on their level, about their size, moving on the ground in front of them, they want to eat it. If it's taller than them, coming above them, higher than they are, they want to run away. So it's a pretty simple life some frogs live sometimes. We'll see if he wants another little snack since he finished that one. He's our good, our good eater here. So he's getting some fish today. Oh, he's still swallowing. You can see those eyeballs blink. Bullfrogs here at the zoo, are, our African bullfrogs eat a mixture of fish, crickets, um, and gel, special carnivore gel. And uh, in the wild though, they would eat pretty much anything they could fit into their mouth, which could include fish, other frogs, um, birds, mice, snakes. Oh my goodness, there you go, buddy. Good job, that's a good meal. <laughs> So you can see he's not the most graceful eater, but they are pretty powerful when they need to be. Um, we're going to pull over to Echo here real quick because he was just demonstrating, maybe he'll keep doing it, his little digging with his, with his back end. Um, and while we're watching that, I'm going to start to pull up some questions and see if anybody has anything they'd like to know about our bullfrog friends today. So take a look at our friend Echo. here that's okay well I have one more piece for our friend um, Alpha we can see if he's interested in that and then I have a few questions read. all right buddy you ready oh you can see that big tongue he got a piece of it to know if they hop a lot that is a great question Justin so these guys do hop um, pretty well and often if they if they need to for the most part though they're gonna find a nice cozy place in the water a nice cozy place on land and they're gonna stay there for a while um, they don't just go around hopping all day long they don't want to waste the energy or the time um, so they do hop if they have to. Now, there are types of frogs out there that can leap really far and really well. Bullfrogs are not one of them, at least African bullfrogs. They have pretty short legs compared to the rest of their body. Many frog species that you see around here in North America, such as leopard frogs and green frogs, they have, long, they have legs that are twice the length of their own body. So they are really, really good at jumping. These bullfrogs are really good at crawling and, and kind of hopping if they need to. All right, so we have someone named, um, oh, someone has a pixie frog named Onslow. Nicole does. So yeah, these guys are often also called pixie frogs. Great reference there. Um, hopefully your friend Onslow is not uh, um, too, too big and, and too big of an eater. You can see Alpha likes to really eat some fish there. So if you do you know, want to bring a frog home and include one in your home. They are a lot of work. They need a lot of food and a lot of space, but that's really cool that you have one named Onslow. All right, let's see. Someone said he's a good eater. Yes, he is. Alpha is our uh, guaranteed to eat his food frog. Echo is a little bit more shy about eating sometimes, but that's okay. He's also uh, more exploratory. You can see he is curious, checking out all the different areas of his little enclosure. All right, so how old are they and how long can they live? Great question. So Alpha and Echo are both about four years old. They are, um, they came to the zoo in 2016, but they can live upwards to 20 to 40 years, 20 to 40 years, as long as they are, you know, here at a zoo, well cared for. But in the wild, living up to 20 years as an amphibian, a frog is pretty impressive, especially because even though 
Alpha and Echo have those big eyes to see around their bodies. They have good camouflage. They're very good at swimming. There are lots of things that would want to eat them in the wild. So living for that long is pretty impressive. But again, they are a very large species. They, uh, they have that size advantage. All right, Denise wants to know if you have to be careful touching them because of their skin. That's a great question. So yeah, when we're, when we're working with amphibians here at the zoo, we always try to wash our hands and be very careful because we often have oils and things on our skin that they can absorb through their skin. So when, um, especially this time of year when we're wearing suntan lotion and using hand sanitizer and soap and all kinds of stuff, we do try to make sure we wash our hands just with regular water and rinse them off nicely before we handle them. So if you come across amphibians out in your yard, like toads and frogs, it's always good to wash your hands before and after you handle them if you're, if you're going to handle them. Especially because frogs and toads can be very sensitive to certain diseases as well. So uh, we talked a little bit about chytrid fungus when you guys met our, our uh, dart frogs and our Panamanian golden frogs. Bullfrogs, unfortunately, are sensitive to things like that as well. Greg wants to know if you make good pets. So as I mentioned uh, just a minute ago, you know, frogs are a big responsibility, just like any other pet. They do need a large amount of space. You can see how large these frogs are. They need a lot of space to move around and swim. You have to make sure that their water is kept nice and clean and healthy and um, free of any kind of chemicals and bacteria. You have to keep a wide variety of foods on them so that they can stay healthy. Our frogs here eat, as I said before, fish and gel and crickets and worms and all kinds of stuff. So um, they could be a good pet if you were willing to dedicate that time and to do the research and make sure you provided them the proper habitat. And again, remember, they can live 20 to 40 years. This is a long-term commitment for sure. Okay, we had a question, what's the difference between frogs and toads? That's a great question. So the short answer is that typically when we're looking at frogs and toads in our area, toads prefer to be a little bit more on land. They have a little bit more bumpy skin. It's a little more dry. Um, they also typically have shorter back legs. They hop versus um, leap. And they also, when they lay their eggs, they don't lay them in big clumps or bunches. They lay them in long strings. So those are kind of the general rules. But as you can see, if we take a look at our bullfrog, our bullfrog has bumpy skin, short back legs. Now they would lay clumps of eggs, but they, there aren't a lot of really specific rules as far as frogs and toads go. But if you're looking at your own backyard, toads are gonna be living under rock piles and under logs and in the forest, whereas frogs are gonna wanna stay closer to water. And frogs are typically better at leaping and jumping than toads. Toads are more of kind of crawling and hopping types of animals. All right, guys, so I think that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with Alpha and Echo and myself today, learning a little bit more about those aquatic adaptations and amphibians and how they would survive in their habitat. If you guys have any further questions, please put them down in the comments. I'll take some time to answer them later today. And make sure you tune in again on Tuesday every week for the next few weeks. We're going to be Tuesday and Thursday, Zoo School Live. We'll be meeting some awesome new animals and potentially bringing back some favorites as well. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.